Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to take 10-15 minutes to play around with Leonardo.ai. It is yet another text-to-image generator, but I really like the interface. I really like how it's shaping up. The first thing you'll notice is this is a early bird, um, sign up early type of uh, situation so you want to sign up you're probably gonna have to wait a little bit I didn't have to wait all that long for my invite to come in through my email and it, it seems to me that it's it's not as exclusive as some of those earlier uh, invite systems anyways you probably want to sign up for for it sooner rather than later but it is positioning itself similar to uh, OpenAI's Dolly or Midjourney, in which they have a bit of a free tier, but they're looking for uh, people to start paying for tokens and subscriptions. Now, Leonardo positions itself as this tool for game creators. So you can see up in the background, they have these like 3D looking things. Uh, they, they do textures, um, they do little, bits of different things but um, most importantly for me is that they still do the plain old put in your prompt and spit something out so uh, this is great because you have a lot of options now I I've really liked Bing's um, image creator the the results have been amazing uh, open AI's dolly 2 has been kind of iffy for me um, and stable diffusion uh, is one where you run on your own computer instead of an online service. Stable Diffusion, I love the customizations to it, the ability for you to change whatever you want, but the real problem I've hit is it's taxing. It, it needs me to be on my computer. Uh, it needs a pretty beefy graphics card that not everyone can afford. And it just takes so much out of your computer and it takes time. All of this is uh, not, not the funnest environment to play around with. But uh, Leonardo, what I've really been impressed with is the interface so far. So um, let's, let's just get right to it. Um, when you start the app, you're going to see a lot of inspired images, a lot of featured images that uh, you know show you what's possible. And I, I took a few of these um, just to start myself off. This one looks, ooh, actually, I love these coloring pages. Uh, you can take one of these and just remix it. So you can ask for, um, you can ask that it generate something similar. Um, losing my train of thought here. Basically it's copying the prompt over and you can see there's prompt here, there's a negative prompt, but what I wanted to do is take a look here. It's using Dream Shaper 3.2 so that's good to know. When you remix you'll see that it is the same style. You have negative prompts, you have the uh, actual prompt, it selected the right model, and what I'm going to do is just take a look at just two images. Now you can see that they're trying to get you to upgrade to a plan. And even through an API, this is not instant. It'll take 10, 15 seconds. But um, you have this, uh, different options. But the free tier is actually pretty generous. You get up to 150 generations a day. Uh, they have this token system. Realistically, you're not getting 150 images a day. Um, you're probably getting half of that, but still very generous. You have different options of background removals, pending jobs. All of it is to say that the free plan is quite um, quite generous in my opinion and I haven't had much of a reason to jump forward in these but if you're really building your own comic building your own video game you know you're probably going to move up pretty quickly but if we go back here to image generation um, you will see that uh, we have two images here um, 
if you haven't played around with prompts yet, you want to be very descriptive, but this is a uh, stable diffusion style. So if you have brackets, and the more brackets you have, the more important it is. So in this case, pure white background, clearly very important for a coloring page. So they put, what is that, six brackets on either side. But if you wanted to, um, you can use uh, a bracket over here, and here, oops, I clicked enter by accident. Uh, and that will put this as the most important, and then this is still important, and then the rest of it is less important. Um, negative prompts are things you don't want to see, and you see a lot of times as poorly drawn hands, six fingers, uh, you know, ugly, morbid, these aren't uh, helpful, but mut mutation, deformed, a lot of these uh, occur because you don't want images that are typically AI-like, which is, you know, six fingers, hands with six fingers uh, on them, uh, or people missing or having extra arms, legs, uh, not heads usually, but different body parts. Um, so this is all stable diffusion stuff, and you can start generating, and you can see over here that they're using four tokens here. And I think this is because uh, I'm first generating two images here, so uh, that's two tokens, but each of them are multiplied by two because of the rest of the settings. So, um, let's go through this first. Um, on this side, you can see I have my 126 tokens, and in 19 hours, I'll get a bump back to 150. Uh, you're going to choose a number of images. If you want to be quick about it, you can do four. Um, usually I do two and, and slowly refine my prompt until I have something I like or fairly close, and then I start generating four or more. Um, Leonardo has a couple really interesting things. I'm not sure how it's doing this, but um, this particular toggle, Prompt Magic, uh, supposedly makes it far more, pays far closer attention to what you've written. And if you use stable diffusion enough, it happens very often. They get the main idea, but there's something that you want that it just won't draw. So for example, uh, I might have, you know, an epic battleground, and for some reason I want a Christmas tree in the corner. Um, I could put six brackets around the Christmas tree, and at times it just doesn't read it, it doesn't see it. Uh, prompt magic supposedly has greater prompt adherence. Uh, you can also do this by uh, guidance scale, which is, um, can't remember what, what it's called in stable diffusion, but it's also how, basically how much it penalizes the, the model if it doesn't adhere closely to this. But for whatever reason, sometimes stable diffusion has blind spots. And I'm not saying Leonardo does not, but I have found that turning on and off the prompt magic makes a pretty big difference uh, in terms of how accurate and how closely it draws um, what you've asked it to. Um, the other thing is this actually doubles your token cost, so from 2 to now 4 when you enable it. Uh, there's a separate slider for strength, so how, how strong do you want their prompt magic uh, to, to, to uh, apply? And this is separate from the guidance scale, so keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how this prompt magic works behind the hood. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is this high contrast. It's it's meant to create more punchy kind of images, uh, moodier images with more shadows. Um, definitely delivers. I, I toggle it on and off here and there. Um, image dimensions, I think that's fairly obvious. If you get too large, it starts to increase your token count. Um, I am a fan of... Uh, no. Not this way. Uh, there we go. Uh, higher width. No, that's not right. There we go. Higher height than width, so like a portrait type of layout. 
but this is going to cost me more tokens, so let's scale it down just a tad bit here. Okay. Um, control net and tiling. Uh, control net and tiling are both kind of these cool new features that uh, are showing up in Stable Diffusion as well. I'm just going to ignore this. Um, the big one for me that I haven't been able to get on Stable Diffusion myself is this image prompt. Uh, this is something that Mid Journey did very well. You can provide an image and have it remix it. And this is very useful for uh, that Lensa type of look, providing your, you know, your own selfie and having it turn into a cartoon or anime or comic uh, style. I'm not going to play around with that today. What I wanted to show you and what I'm really excited about is this over here. They give you a series of models for you to try out, but they also have a ton of community models that you can you can try. So Stable Diffusion, you got to download it. They're massive. You got to keep it in your hard drive, but they have so many models. Um, on this side, platform models, they have a number that they've suggested. There's like a vintage style photography. Uh, these ones are more for, I'd say, concept art type of things. Um, you know, uh, they have very interesting ones. I don't know why you would create one focused solely for magic potions, but why not? Um, lots of different designs here. Um, it's exciting because the community can upload all sorts of models too, and some of them are interesting, some of them are bizarre, um, but you have so, so many options for you to choose from. So lots of anime, uh, I love this kind of uh, 2D kind of look. Um, different styles, like this is a really unique look, and I, I am going to go straight for this one. So let's see how this looks when we do that coloring page paired with ink and line art. For tokens, um, high contrast probably makes, uh, maybe not. Let's turn that off and see where we go. Ah, see, even with six brackets, the pure white background isn't doing it. Mm. And the look is just a bit odd, too. So you can delete, download, unzoom. I don't know what that means. But what I wanted to do was upscale this. So. We've generated an image that is 768 by 768. That's pretty small. Um, if you want to upscale, it means maybe going 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. Um, you have different options here. Uh, clearly not this one because I didn't pay for it, but um, there are upscalers are better for um, drawn images, more like uh, 2D art, and then there are some for photorealistic. In this case, uh, smooth, crisp, I think we're probably going to go crisp because it's this sketchy look. But I think we can really punch up the contrast in Photoshop if we wanted to make this into more of a coloring book. And we have this. and we can download it. Um, the last thing I wanted to show, and I swear this will be quick, is the real problem I've had with, um, <clears throat> the real problem I've had with using Stable Diffusion is uh, that all of this in-painting uh, everyone's seen that demo of the Mona Lisa and then some someone that would be out painting uh, trying to expand outside of that realm what would be on the left and the right of Mona Lisa um, I'm just gonna pick an image real quick here let's see if I can find one oh let's just 
move this one right back and uh, we'll scale it down. Let's snap to the grid here. So, what if I wanted to expand this outwards a little bit? Wish I had a better... Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to go back to my prompt. Okay, let's, let's try this out. So we want to expand beyond what the image had originally generated. And I just find, find that this has been so much more intuitive um, and so much easier to use in stable diffusion on my own computer. Uh, we're going to get four different options. So this one is interesting, not bad. Um, not bad. Okay. I think that... I think that last one is the closest bit, um, but I'm not particularly happy. Let's let's go with Stable Diffusion 2.1 instead. This will take a moment here. Whoa, that's awful. That is awful. They clearly missed the mark here. Actually, that's interesting. I like this one. So we'll, we'll accept this one. Um, that's out painting. And then in painting, we're just going to draw a mask. And we'll use a thicker pen here. Um, and I want to turn this. And let's go three, one, two, three. I want to stick an ear in here. Nope. 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 There we go. And we can accept. And then as you use your tokens, you can slowly work this out. And so over here, I wasn't particularly happy here, so let's turn this into mouth and chin. There we go, that's nice and clean. Uh, these are all all right. Ah, uh, let's go back to the first one, and then we have it. And then we can just download, uh, download and go anew. Um, so, anyways, I wanted to show you guys Leonardo just because I I got whitelisted just fairly recently, played around with it, and thought this was so much better than mid-journey trying to type into a Discord bot or stable diffusion, just waiting for my computer to burn down. So um, hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy it as much as I am because I feel like I'm discovering stable diffusion all new again. Uh, we'll be playing around with more tools soon, so keep an eye out next week for our next video. Thanks for watching.